What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Yohan Adon, who had six Ks in five innings, giving up two runs, and he had this slider. He was up against Jose Buto, who had six Ks in six and a third innings, giving up two runs and had these heaters. Lance Lynn had one K in four and two thirds innings, giving up eight runs. Another terrible Lance Lynn outing. He did have this cutter. And he faced JT Chargois, who had two Ks in one inning as the opener and had this fastball and slider. Gavin Williams looked solid yesterday with four strikeouts in five innings, giving up one run. He had this 99 mile an hour paint, this changeup, and slider for a sword. And here's an overlay of his fastball and slider, and you can see why he would get a sword on that slider. It tunnels with that fastball and then ends up in the dead zone of your swing. A filthy combination. He battled Joe Ryan, who had three Ks and four innings, giving up two runs and had this sweeper. Hyunjin Ryu had five Ks and five innings, giving up two runs and had these fastballs and painted cutter. He faced J.P. Sears, who had three Ks and five innings, giving up one run and had this fastball and changeup. Spencer Strider had a rough outing, with five Ks in two and two thirds innings, but giving up six runs. He looked very unstrider like, and that's probably the last nail in the coffin in his chances to win the Cy Young Award, but did get Ks on these wicked sliders. He faced Dakota Hudson, who had two Ks in five innings and got a sword on this slider. Clark Schmidt had six Ks in six and a third innings, giving up two runs, and had these two seamers, knuckle curve, and cutter. And he faced Matt Manning, who had one K in one inning and had this fastball. Kyle Gibson had three strikeouts in six innings, giving up three runs, and had this changeup and sweeper. He faced Patrick Sandoval, who had three Ks in five innings, giving up four earned runs, and got a sword on this slider. Tuki Toussaint had six Ks in six innings, giving up two runs, and had these filthy splitters. I thought his splitter looked really good. Freddy Peralta had four Ks in five and a third innings, giving up three runs, and had this elevated fastball, these sliders, and this curveball. In probably the most anticipated matchup of the day, Justin Verlander faced off against Max Scherzer. Verlander had six Ks in seven innings, giving up one earned run, and had these fastballs and sliders, including this painted slider. He outdueled Max Scherzer, who had four Ks in three innings, but gave up seven runs. I don't know if he was keyed up or what, but he left way too many pitches over the middle of the plate. He did have this curveball and changeup. Jordan Wicks had one K in six and two thirds innings, giving up two runs. He wasn't particularly dominant. He gave up nine hits, but did get a lot of weak contact and got a K on in this elevated fastball. And here's an overlay of his changeup and elevated fastball, and you can see what would keep hitters off balance. His changeup is a real equalizer. Zach Wheeler was outstanding yesterday with seven Ks and six innings, giving up only one hit and no runs. He got Ks on his four-seam and two-seam fastballs, as well as his sweeper. He battled Michael Waka, who had six Ks and four innings, giving up three runs and had this fastball and changeup. Logan Gilbert was really good yesterday with nine Ks and five and a third innings, giving up three runs. He had a dominating mix of fastballs, splitters, and sliders, and knuckle curves. And he outdueled Lion Richardson, who had three Ks and four and two thirds innings, but gave up seven runs and had this 98 mile an hour heater. Nick Pavetta had five Ks and four and two thirds innings, giving up three runs. Pavetta got Ks on this fastball, slider, and lawn dart curveball. Look how far in front of the plate this thing lands and still gets a swing and miss. And he battled yesterday's filthiest starting pitcher of the day, Tyler Glasnow. Glasnow was ridiculous yesterday and certainly looked like a destroyer of worlds. I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Glasnow had an amazing 14 strikeouts in six innings, giving up only one run. He became the first Ray ever to have multiple 14 strikeout games and just absolutely blew away a Boston lineup with his overpowering fastballs, wicked sliders, and hammer curveballs. And here are a few overlays that show why Glasnow's stuff is so filthy. Here's an overlay of his fastball and slider, and you can see how that slider starts out in the same plane as that fastball and then veers off. And here are a couple overlays of his fastball and curveball. And this overlay of his 97 mile an hour fastball and 85 mile an hour curveball is absolutely ridiculous. Look how perfectly these pitches tunnel. And then that curveball dives to the dirt like it was drawn there by a ball magnet. Okay, that sounded a little sexual. But when Glasnow's on, his pitching is kind of pornographic. Glasnow looked like a force of nature out there and probably could have struck out 20 if he stuck around. 
and here's a breakdown of Glasnow's pitch arsenal for the game. And he really spread around his Ks on multiple pitches. A fantastic outing by Tyler Glasnow. Now onto my filthiest relievers. David Bednar had this curveball and then this fastball off the plate that was called a strike, but I think C.B. Buckner just wanted to go home. Araldus Chapman had this splitter in White Castle special. Emmanuel Classe had these flaming cutters. Clay Holmes had this wicked sweeper. Daniel Palencia had this 100-mile-an-hour gas. Sam Henches had this fastball and curveball. Greg Weissert had this elevated heater. Nick Sandlin had this Bohemian Rhapsody splitter. Mama, he just killed a man. And this look from Pitching Ninja Soul Cam shows you just when Polanco's soul left his body. Luke Little had these vicious sweepers. You might remember Luke Little from a few years ago when I put out a video on YouTube of him hitting 105 miles an hour from an indoor mound. Well, my little Luke is all grown up. Actually, Luke isn't all that little. He's six foot eight. Abner Uribe continued to be really filthy with this stuff. Edward Cabrera had eight Ks in four innings in relief, giving up only one hit, and had these ridiculous change-ups topping out at 95.1 miles an hour on a change-up. Heck, I'm not even sure that this 96-mile-an-hour pitch wasn't a change-up. That high velo change-up is absolutely mind-blowing. And my filthiest reliever of the day yesterday was Mason Miller. Miller was back off his IL stint and topped out at 102.4 miles an hour and worked in some vicious cutters and sliders. Miller is going to be a stud in this league for a long, long time. And now my pitching ninja moment of zen. I don't know if the Angels thought they were getting in Adley Rutschman's head, but to me, this just makes Adley even more endearing. He's eating a hot dog. We know you're eating a hot dog. I'm not, sir. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Max Freed for 6Ks or more, then take Carlos Rodon for 6Ks or more, top it off with Luis Castillo for 7Ks or more. And if you're so inclined, because NFL starts up today, throw in an NFL pick. I mean, I'll throw in Patrick Mahomes for over 287 and a half yards passing. Former pitcher, let's do it. What would your picks of the day be? 